Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's video. So the first thing I kind of need to say is yes, this is probably my new favorite top. I cannot guarantee that I'm not going to be wearing it in like every single video that I sit down and film. And I also am really vibing with space buns at the moment. But yeah, welcome to today's video. And as you can tell from the title, I am going to be having a semi-ish deep conversation with you guys. I feel I just wanted to talk a bit about what I've done recently to really kind of help change my life, which sounds really dramatic. And like, it's quite a bold statement to make, but genuinely I kind of sat down the other day and I was like, what? has really changed and these weren't big major things they were just small tweaks to my life that i have made some of them subconsciously some of them kind of actively but i've made some changes and they really seem to have helped me i still have ups and downs like any normal person don't get me wrong but i just feel different to last year and i just wanted to sit down and kind of share my thoughts on this so that's today's video i hope you enjoy this video definitely like it if you do so the first thing that i'm going to talk about is basically family time spending time with my family i have mentioned this before but like last year i was very much just pulling myself away from my family and that was a problem i was like this is something i really need to change and so i've just started you know by just spending more quality time with the people that mean the most to me and the people that i love the most in my life and you know that has meant taking more breaks stepping away from my desk and saying you know i'm not gonna work this evening because i'm gonna watch some netflix with mom or i'm gonna take this afternoon off because emily and i are gonna have like a spontaneous photo shoot i've been going on regular walks with dad with matthew um we have the odd two word conversations he grunts i say hi it goes like that but you know i'm at home with my family and i know that my family are always going to be there for me and i was just like why am i trying to pull myself away from these people like it just didn't make sense but i think a lot of us go through these periods when you feel like you want to move out you feel like you want to be independent and you don't want the help and support from your family anymore i don't know what it was but i just felt as if i needed to be independent and do everything myself and you know i was so busy i couldn't even spend time with my family which shouldn't be true like you should be able to spend time with your family and i just had to get very real with myself and be like holly why are you trying to do this it's not achieving you anything in the long term if anything it's doing more bad things than good and i think it really has been a blessing in disguise for me to be doing my masters online because i have stayed at home i am still with my family and to be honest with you i do not want to move out or at least in the next few years obviously things could change your life can change overnight sometimes but at the moment i'm just so happy to say that i love being at home it's not always sunshines and rainbows like there are always arguments there's always bickering you know that's just family life but i've grown to just be like you know i can't change the small things there are going to be things i'm always going to complain about but like at the end of the day this is my family and these are the people that are always going to be there for me in my life so like make the most of the time you spend with them. Everyone in your family isn't gonna be with you forever. That's the harsh reality. And I just had to say that to myself and be like, look Holly, stop like pulling yourself away, please. I'm getting teary eyed. I told you this was gonna be a deep conversation. I have always been someone to like love home, to love my family. You know, when I go away, I get really homesick. That's just because my roots are here at home and that's never gonna change. I just had to stop trying to resist those ties. Hello emails. So yeah, in summary, I would just say that lockdown really has made me appreciate how special my family is to me. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is basically to do with my online presence or the content I put out online because obviously, yes, YouTube is like my main platform. I basically share my whole life on YouTube, but basically I have realized, and I'm so glad I've realized this, but I realized that I do not need to share everything online. I need to give further explanation, obviously, but essentially last year I reached a point when I felt as if I needed to share everything online. I felt as if I didn't have any personal or private life at all. Anyone who puts their life online should not feel obliged to share everything. There are just some things that will never make their way online. You can keep that to yourself. This is nothing against you guys that tune into my videos and watch my videos because I honestly love our community we have online. I feel like over time on my channel, I've introduced 
you to more and more of my life and especially when we hit lockdown you know my whole family was at home you've really gotten to know my family like my mum my dad my sister matthew really doesn't like to be online to be honest with you so you don't know much about him you'll occasionally see him floating around probably not wearing anything i obviously make loads of vlogs i love vlogging and that's what i really love to do as long as my family aren't always in my videos they're okay with it but yeah last year i just reached this point where i was like what do i do because on the one hand i was like if i share this with my audience online if i talk about it and open up then it means that there are less unknowns you know and people have fewer gaps to fill themselves fewer people will make assumptions about me and jump to conclusions if i share information because i'm just giving people the information that they want to hear but then on the other hand i was like if i do share this information then it's giving more people information to just scrutinize because obviously yes when you put your life online people are gonna judge and people won't like you and they will write horrible stuff you know that's something that is inevitable you can't really get rid of it hate will follow you wherever you go sadly but yeah as i said before i have now reached this point where i'm like you know, I will share as much as I want to online. And when it reaches a point when I feel uncomfortable about sharing something or I feel like it doesn't have a place online, then that is okay. There are so many things that will be going on in my life right now that you won't know about because I'm not sharing them and that's fine. I've kind of built some walls around me and they're kind of thin walls, but you know, I'm glad they're there because it means that sometimes I just won't share some things. Earlier this year, I made a bit of a mistake, perhaps opening up about something I maybe shouldn't have shared because I should have kept it to myself or I shared in a slightly wrong way. I see that now. I am very open to criticism when people think that something is not right. And yeah, I just feel like I can really make those decisions now. Like whenever I think about posting something, I'm like, am I okay to share that? Will other people feel okay listening to that? So yeah, I hope that kind of made sense. But I will continue to vlog. I'm like pretending to vlog right now. But you know, I will continue to vlog and to give you guys updates and share as much as I can even if you're not in the same situation as me i hope that this still gives you the courage to you know build your own foundations or walls around you as i said like some things will always be personal to you or you might only share with a handful of people that are closest to you in your life and that's okay there will sometimes be pressure to share stuff but never share something if you are not 100 percent comfortable with doing so is what i'm trying to say kind of related to that i want to talk about mm, do i say toxic i am gonna say toxic but i'm gonna explain i had to confront my kind of toxic relationship with instagram and i didn't realize this at the time it's another thing that has taken me a while to realize but if you follow me on instagram this is a mini plug you may have noticed that i don't post as much on my stories anymore social media we all know it can be amazing it can be such a powerful tool but sometimes it's not always the best thing you know what i've realized is that you know i had this kind of weird and toxic relationship with instagram especially instagram stories where i just felt as if i needed to always have something on my instagram story like when there was nothing on my instagram story I would just be like, oh my gosh, I need to post. I need to have something on my story because as a, I don't know, YouTuber, content creator, influencer, whatever you want to call us, as one of those, I felt as if I always needed to have something on my Instagram story. I don't know why. I don't know how I conjured up this idea in my head. I just felt as if I always needed to be sharing something. I always needed to be giving you details or information about what I was doing in my days. I literally felt as if I needed to be sharing anything and everything all the time. I just created this idea in my head where i was like i have to always be posting on my story like that is what i'm supposed to be doing again i honestly don't know what changed or what made me realize this exactly as soon as i stopped and as soon as i let go and i made the pledge to you know be okay with not having something on my instagram story i felt instantly so much better i did not realize how mentally exhausting and draining it was and i am just so thankful that i finally realized this because it has given me so much more space to just breathe and to just live my life in the moment and not always feel as if i needed to be giving people updates about what i was doing the amazing thing about stories and the point of stories is like you know you kind of share things in the moment but 
that kind of means that you can't live in the moment yourself because you know if say you're i don't know standing in front of this amazing waterfall i'm kind of picturing myself traveling or something because we haven't been able to travel but you know imagine if you're staring in front of an amazing waterfall or something in that moment you're taking it in but you know we're always snapping away on our phones we're taking pictures and if you're uploading it onto a story like are you really in that moment like genuinely are you present i think most of the time the answer will be no and that's kind of my point i kind of lost touch with my reality and my life because i always felt as if i needed to be sharing something the difference between like me vlogging and me posting on my story is that you know when i'm vlogging i don't post things instantly whereas with instagram and with stories and stuff you do post things instantly so it's not as if you kind of have any time to appreciate that moment or think about what you're posting and think about whether you want to share that information because it is just so quick. Like the speed at which information and stuff is spread sometimes on the internet is so crazy. I'm always one to say like, who cares about the rules? Who cares about conforming? And you know, doing things just because society expects you to do it. And I've realized that yes, I am a YouTuber or whatever, an influencer, but I don't always have to be sharing stuff online. Having said that, it's another platform where you guys can comment or send me messages or engage in the stuff that i'm doing on instagram for say a youtube video so i'm not saying don't follow me on instagram because i do like to post a good picture and post on my stories sometimes okay so now moving away from like social media i'm gonna talk about communication which actually implies it's to do with like social media but it's actually not is about communication with actual real life human beings which in this kind of era the era of a pandemic it feels like speaking to human beings in person is uh, a thing of the past but hopefully we're moving towards a better future but yeah communication again this is something i have spoken a bit about it's definitely one of the things that i still really need to improve and work on but i have made a lot of progress recently as well and that's why i'm talking about it in this video because even the small steps i have made so far have made like a huge difference so the first thing to say about this is yes i'm an overthinker i overthink everything at the moment i'm going through a phase where i feel like everyone hates me not like my family and the people i see every single day but the people i don't communicate with as much or the people i haven't seen in a while i just feel like everyone hates me but that's not what i'm really here to talk about what i wanted to mention in particular was this idea of you know communication and me bottling things up inside which i am very good at doing i will make up the strangest of scenarios in my head i often interpret things very wrongly i bottle things up inside and I process them internally and sometimes as I said if I take things the wrong way or I think someone has implied something it really gets to me and the easiest way to solve this is through communication yes it's going to take quite a bit of mental strength and courage sometimes to just talk about something that is getting you down honestly don't get me wrong I I feel this and that's probably the main reason why I don't open up about a lot of things but honestly it is so good to just open up about something and to you know address the problem head on if something is worrying you go and open up about it go and talk to someone about it because i can guarantee you that it will make you feel so much better like instantly the longer you dwell on something and the longer you worry about something and internalize something the worse it gets and it's not just going to go away very easily and the best thing is that most of the time this simple act of communication yes there might be a little bit of a barrier to doing so to like opening up in the first place but once you do that like i swear most of the time your problems will be solved almost instantaneously because you know someone has helped you out or you've just addressed the situation like you've come to realize that something you were making up in your head is just not true at all i don't want to ever go back to a place when i struggle to open up sometimes yeah it's going to be really hard to open up about some things but what i've realized is that it's 100 percent worth it in the end i kind of have like five things in total the last thing i'm going to talk about is kind of to do with to-do lists but i'm kind of going to talk about a mixture of a few different things they all kind of fit under this umbrella term of doing things not just for a tick box i obviously love to-do lists i love making my weekly plans i talk about it all the time because it really does help me to like stay on top of things and get things done and stay organized it is a really powerful tool but what i have realized recently is you know not everything has a place on a to-do list not everything should be written down on a to-do list and then you know ticked off when it's done and this all kind of relates to me 
in general slowing down and appreciating downtime and not working myself into the ground and working all the time i now have a lot of small habits that i will just do when i feel like it doing some stretching or doing some yoga or going to watch some tv some netflix with mum. i won't write these things down because i just do them when i want to and when i feel like doing that or do some meditation while well, try and meditate because i'm not so good at meditating listening to a podcast or just going on a walk like randomly just going on a walk that just happens when it happens when you feel like it and having created this separation between you know like my weekly plans and the things that i want to get done and the things that i should stay on top of and the other things that you know i can do whenever i want and when i feel like it it's again just really changed the way i work and i view my life and i appreciate what i'm doing every day i feel so much more like balanced i've always been worried of like hello uh the family dog walk i want to join i think sometimes it just takes time or it takes you growing up a bit to realize these things i'm not saying my life is perfect i'm still working on a lot but like in general and summarizing this like whole video you know i feel like i really have made improvements in quite a few different aspects of my life finding balance and enjoyment and laughter and appreciating all of the small moments in life yes obviously these things are quite personal to me but you guys might be able to relate to some of them and yeah i hope that some of these things you guys can work on yourselves you might have made the same changes as me recently or lockdown might have made you realize the same things as me if you did enjoy it definitely give it a thumbs up comment down below there's no obligation as well for you guys to share anything but if you do want to share anything down below feel free to leave it in a comment if you are new around here and you want to join us you can subscribe as always you can hit the bell and yeah as always i will speak to you very soon in another video thank you as always for being here for listening to me i think that's everything i wanted to say for today bye